Welcome to Reflections, presented by the Outreach Committee of Paducah Cooperative Ministry. Our current series of programs is focusing on missions and mission work. Today we're going to be talking about screaming fans, good music, and killer Mick Jagger moves. Our guest today is Craig Felker from the West Kentucky band Hearts of Saints. I want to start off today learning a little bit about Craig. Uh, you grew up in this area, Craig. Tell us just a little bit about your background, your personal background, uh, so forth and so on. Well, believe it or not, I didn't, I didn't, my background doesn't involve Mick Jagger, <laughs> but I love that intro. That was but awesome. But you've got, we're going to show the killer Mick Jagger moves uh, later. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm born and raised in this area. Um, in fact, was a TV major at this school. I uh, thought I wanted to go to college and pursue a degree being a sports announcer, being the next Dick Vitale and uh, covering Kentucky basketball games. And kind of uh, that changed very quickly. Music became my passion. Um, kind of uh, I just met Jesus, really, and uh, just felt called to let people know that there was music that was positive, that was not lame, um, that was quote unquote Christian. And so I went to Nashville, got my degree in uh, the music recording industry business and lived in Nashville, did that for a while and then moved back five years ago to Kentucky um, as the band started to progress and we started to travel more and uh, wanted to be with family. And, and so here I am and, and still doing the band thing and, and, and loving it. Well, that's a good segue. You brought up the family. Uh, tell me about your, uh, are you married, uh, so forth and so on. A beautiful wife of six years, Miss Stephanie Felker. Um, I've, I've, I've met and have come to know Stephanie, and she's a wonderful woman, and I probably imagine that uh, her family thinks you married up, right? Well, most people would say that. <laughs> I was well, in New York last week, and, the, and I, this guy who's very... Uh, He's a very loud man, let's say that. Um, and he met my wife for the first time, and he was quite complimentary of my wife and uh, not so complimentary of me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not surprised at all by that. You no, know, she's awesome. And, and if not for her, I, I don't get to do this. And um, that's great. That's she's, great. She's been a part of it all. I mean, our first date, uh, she went with me to really kind of our first gig, my first gig nine years ago. Um, and pretty much our entire marriage has been her being a part of what the band is now. Well, we've been in this band for about five years, and our whole marriage, that's all she's known. So without her approval and her thumbs up and um, her allowing her time, time that I could be with her, um, she, she allows me to go and do the band thing. And, and now she's traveling with us. So that's it's great. She's unemployed and traveling with us, so well, it's a beautiful thing. We keep mentioning the band, and I don't think we should go any... Uh, further without you. Uh, I, you are the, the front man, the singer correct, and I think we need to give a... Uh, Depending on what you think of the front man and the singer. <laughs> Mick Jagger. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to, to give some credit and uh, identity to the rest of the band. Tell us about your, your band mates. Well, the other guys, um, I've known uh, brothers for, for really like the last six years, but um, it's really no coincidence. I mean, it's funny how people, you know, God puts people in your lives and, and relationships happen. But I met Jason nine years ago while I was at school at MTSU uh, pursuing my music business degree. And um, he just, I was playing with a guy, just kind of an acoustic thing, and he saw we needed a drummer and jumped on board. Last name? Killebrew, Jason Killebrew from Hopkinsville. Um, we played for a few years, and then he brought LJ Grandstaff from Princeton. Um, into the picture and LJ introduced us to Joe Purdy. And LJ does what? For a living? No, as in the band. Oh, he plays guitar. Guitar player. Um, he, he plays guitar and then Joel uh, plays bass and he, LJ introduced us to Joel. And Joel's last name? Purdy. Purdy. P-U-R-D-Y and he is quite Purdy. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> so it's, He's, uh, it's Western, all uh, basically a Western Kentucky We're all Western lineup. Kentucky boys. Um, We've been this band with these four guys for uh, five years right? and uh, kind of started out under the name Special D and then two years ago, a year and a half ago, we switched the name to Hearts of Saints. And we're going to get to that later so, also, but uh, I think, uh, didn't you run into conflict with a, 
an English rapper, was it, or a, a European rapper that was using uh, Special D, and so you had yeah. to rename, repackage the band? You know, one thing I would advise anybody who's starting a band, do a Google search. <laughs> Make sure you're the only one who has that name. But uh, This guy came, about the time we named ourselves Special D, um, long story short, he had a huge hit in Europe, and it was really pretty filthy, <laughs> inappropriate stuff. Right, um, right. Something like really, really bad stuff, not just like, I mean, bad. Um, and you certainly didn't want... We didn't want idea. that. We, we actually, uh, a few times, almost lost certain gigs at festivals because yeah, one time our manager got a call from a, a festival in South Dakota and, he, and they said, I just don't think this Special D is the kind of music we want. We're really not into the techno, you know. Right. Uh, and the content might not be. And so, long story short, we we didn't want the confusion. Yeah. Um, wanted to separate ourselves and uh, and also potentially avoid a lawsuit. Exactly. And so we we changed it um, the first of last year, 2009. And um, I don't know. It was the best move we could have made. It, it was a financial burden because right. when you've got thousands of dollars in merch and branding that you've done for three and a half, four years, um, it, it was really it was really a decision that we made that wasn't, it was the best interest of the band because the name has really become a mission statement, but it financially was not right. a good move at the time. Um, and that's tough when you have to make decisions that um, are really kind of heart conditions and you know, we could have kept going, um, yeah. maybe not have gotten the lawsuit, but I mean, it just wasn't the thing, it was not. It wasn't the identity. No, and we didn't want to be mis misrepresented. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk uh, probably at length about your uh, your musical philosophy and identity. But first, uh, earlier, when you were uh, uh, introducing yourself, uh, you said you were on a track and you met Jesus. Mm -hmm. Go, tell us a little bit about your faith journey. Sure. Uh, uh, how, you, how, to, how you came. Some people, I grew up in the Presbyterian Church, have been there my whole life. Just is that how how your faith journey went in a traditional setting or the met yeah. Jesus thing uh, piqued my interest. Yeah, yeah, yes and no. Um, yeah, I grew up, I mean, I was very blessed. My family, uh, every time the church doors were open when we were young, that's where I was. Um, kind of got away from that until high school. I think that's very common. Yeah, and, and I don't know, I just, I, I yearned for, for, I think we all yearn for you know, knowledge of a higher power, or, or you know. and for me, so I ended up back in in youth group, and man, I looked like a, a believer of Jesus. I mean, I looked, could say and talk and do the dance, but um, really didn't have my experience in, in really meeting Him um, until my first year of college, and that's what kind of set my my course differently. But uh, it's it's really it's funny. I was talking a couple of days before to a guy um, about what God would look like. And, um, and I told him, I just simply told my friend, I said, you, we can't know what God would look like. And one night I was just, it was two in the morning, and I, for an hour I tossed and turned, and Ezekiel was in my head, Ezekiel. And I had a Bible, but I mean, I wasn't, I mean, I had been to church, and I, I, was, you know, I would go and could talk the talk, but I didn't really have any sort of relationship with, with God and, and didn't know what that even meant. And I turned. I finally just get up. I find my Bible, which was really, I mean, dusty. That's how, I mean, it was literally dusty. Um, I opened to Ezekiel, and I had never read Ezekiel. I mean, Ezekiel is not a word you don't just sit hear or think. I mean, why would I have Ezekiel in my head? Um, I turned to it, and it's Ezekiel one is his vision of what God looked like, and so, I, you know, it's, it's one of those moments like this is a coincidence. Is this some? You know, what is this? I, right. I read through all of chapter one, and I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm on my floor at you know two three in the morning, just freaking out like, oh my gosh, I just talked about this. Is God talking to me? Um, chapter two says, "Son of man, stand on your feet, for I'm speaking to you." Oh my! And for the first time in my life, uh, I felt like the Creator of the universe. I didn't feel I knew He was talking directly to me, and I haven't been the same since. That's great, great and, story. And I don't have it all figured out, and you know, still trying to figure that out every day, but I had coffee with someone this morning and, and I guess my life mission is to let people know that Jesus 
isn't always what the church portrays him as. And, yeah. you know, I just want them to know that, uh, that he is love, he is grace, he is mercy. Right. Um, and sometimes the people who have been extended the most grace and the mercy are some of the people that hoard that, you know, keep right. that to themselves more than anybody. Right. And, and I don't mean to blast the church in any way, shape, or form because there are so many great things that church, even locally, that the church is doing. But um, sometimes people confuse God. I heard Rob Bell say this one time. He said, a uh, great pastor, he said, sometimes people confuse God and religion and walk away from both. Yeah. And that's a shame. And it's kind of my life mission to, to, to be a Christ follower and, and to let people know what that's like. And I'm still figuring it out every day. I, it's, yes, <laughs> it's, yeah. People who have all the answers are... Uh, uh, Be weary of them. Exactly. Because they're not God. Well, this takes us <laughs> back to uh, Special D and Hearts of Saints. Uh, tell us a little about the group, and I'm sure it was a, a very thoughtful uh, process. Tell us about the name, Hearts of Saints. Well, in Philemon uh, 1-4, Paul is writing, actually encouraging Philemon, um, because his actual wording is, I'm encouraged by you, but by your kindness and faith, because you've refreshed the hearts of the saints. Oh. Um, so our name has gone from meaning nothing, a special D, um, to, right. to a mission statement. We hope that our music um, is something that is inspiring. We hope that it's thought-provoking, that, it, um, that it just refreshes and encourages and brings hope to the saints, which would be anybody who knows Jesus, right. um, and to people who don't know Jesus. I hope that, I mean, we've always said this, we want to be a great band because we're good, um, not a good band because we're Christian. Right. And we hope that our music, um, you know, we play a lot of festivals that are Christian festivals, and we do a lot of church things, um, but we hope and we play a lot of things that are just music things. that are That are just, quote-unquote, secular. I mean... Um, we, we want to be good because we're good. And if we're good because we're good, then ears might be re more receptive to, um, to what the message is. And the message is, is that we're flawed human beings. We're trying to figure this thing out, but we love Jesus because He loved us. Fabulous. And that's it. Uh, do you get, are you able to uh, speak to people just because of the name? It's an interesting name. Do, do people want to know why Hearts of Saints? Uh, you know, I think uh, some bands use things that clearly identify maybe scripture snippets, yeah. words from a, a, a verse or chapter or something. Do you find people wondering, uh, uh, about, what is Hearts of Saints? How did you come to that? Yeah, a lot of people, especially people who knew us before, why, how, how, they want to know uh, you guys used to be Special D, you know. I mean, just like last week we did a big festival. We, had, we hadn't played in a few years. And we were back there as Hearts of Saints. And several people just didn't know the transition. Um, so you, you, you get that a lot. Um, one of my good friends who writes for the Chicago Tribune uh, tried to convince me when we were doing it. He goes, why don't you go Hearts and Saints? Because that has more of a, an ability to cross, you know, not cross over, I hate that word, but has more of a... You could kind of be both things, and and I loved his point, um, and I and a lot of ways I agree with it. But it just that's where the heart of it came from. It came its hearts of saints because of the the message, and we wanted something that just didn't just sound good, but meant something. And and for us, we had had a name that just didn't mean anything, and right. we thought it sounded like junk too. <laughs> we I mean, we hated exactly. Special D as a name, but we were stuck with it because we had done so much, you know. Um, we wanted something that became kind of our calling card, you know, right. for us as the band. The, you know what? If we don't know what we're about, our name is the direct, clear indication yes. of what we're about. Exactly. Uh, people hear a name, and right or wrong, they think something about it, and so forth. So it's yep. something that you have to be able to stand behind and and feel good about. Yeah, and I, th I think for the first time, you know, ever. I mean, we do. We feel great about the name. It's. It's who we are, it's who we want to be, it's who we strive to be and what we're striving to do. Um, exactly. And, and hopefully, you know, I, I hate labels, you know. Yes, we're, we're four guys who love Jesus and we're, yeah, we're all four, we are following Him and we're a Christian band. But we hope that, uh, yeah, especially like you come to a show here locally or in the western Kentucky area, the front two rows are going to look, they might not look like 
you know, we have people who just aren't in church that are at our shows, and I love that. And that's right. fantastic. Right. I, you know, I hope that our shows continue to be a mixture of just, you know, people from all walks. Well, I've, I've got so much I want to talk about, and I'm trying to keep uh, things uh, cataloged into my head to come <laughs> back to. And uh, I guess next, let's go to your time, because you've brought up the people, your audience, the people, the fans, whatever you want to call them. Uh, mission. You have a band, mm -hmm. and uh, a big the the it is a band, and it's about music. Yep. Let's talk about mission through the music, other ways that you see the band as a mission. But I, yep. I, we definitely want to talk about the music. Yeah. Let's go there, and then we, we'll come back and maybe talk about how you see yourself as speaking for Christ, reaching out Christ. Well, so let's talk about the music well, that, first. That, that scares me. I don't want to, thinking about, you know, speaking for, well, for him. Well, that shouldn't scare you as much as having to do your <laughs> Mick Jagger move before the show's <laughs> over. Um, no, I think that I, a guy in New York last week uh, said this best. He said that if your music isn't telling who you are, what you're about, and um, your songs aren't, the lyrics, you know, aren't, speaking to people, then you're not writing good enough songs. Um, when we did get done playing a set, I should have never had to let anyone know that I think Jesus is, is a hope and His love and His grace. I mean, that's just going to pour out through what we're doing. Yeah, um, yeah, we do that quite a bit. I, I'm, I'm a talker. Uh, in, case no. you did, in case you can't, can't <laughs> tell that. I'm just starting to pick up uh, on that. You know, even, you know, I'm going to talk about the relationship I have with Jesus. I just think we're supposed to do that. But I'm also, when we're, we're playing shows, I mean, um, people aren't bringing us in. If they wanted a, a speaker, they would hire me as a speaker or hire somebody else. And usually we do things and there are speakers. Um, or we're just a show. And, and I want to make sure that people walk away knowing that Jesus is the reason we do what we do. Um, and so I make sure that's articulated. But at the same time, we have a couple things. When we're writing songs, it, yes. either, it needs to either move you physically um, or it needs to speak to you internally. And if I can do both, if we can write songs that are kind of, uh, can do both, that's, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. Speaking of that, I believe we have a, a, a clip uh, in which you discuss, uh, talk about a song uh, that you wrote, uh, Recapture Me. Sure. Okay, I think we're going to go to that clip now. I confess, I confess my heart. Recapture Me uh, was actually written um, spontaneously while we were leading worship at my home church. And these lyrics just kind of popped in my head. Um, and I, I just started to sing, Set my heart on fire, God. Set my heart on fire and recapture me. And I can't explain it, but it resonated with the crowd that day. Uh, and for the next few weeks, it just continued to, to just resonate with me uh, because it was real. It was where my heart was at that moment. I really just wanted desperately for God to invigorate my soul and reignite that passion that I remember once having. And so I wrote the verse and the second verse around the chorus and took it to Michael Farron, uh, the lead singer of Pocket Full of Rocks, and he helped me finish and complete the song. And to me, this song is the most passionate, just raw emotional song on the album. I love the first line in the first that says, I confess, I confess my heart. And that was really how that song was written, just out of a confession to God that I want to have a better relationship with you.
That's great. That's that's great insight there, Craig. Uh, tell me a little bit about how a song for Hearts of Saints comes to be. Is it a collab? Do you have a songwriter? Does one person write the songs? And lyrics and others do music or is it a completely collaborative effort? No, we all generally try to steal other people's ideas and then come to the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, it's, it's different. I mean, that song, Recapture Me, um, LJ and I uh, were leading worship with another guy and um, that chorus just kind of spontaneously happened in an, in, in, a, um, in an instrumental moment. You know, God you know, set my heart on fire, set my heart on fire. And my wife, a couple weeks later, who's the ultimate cynic, critic, um, she's just truth for me because I write a lot of crap. <laughs> um, and you're good at it. Yeah, I'm good at that. Um, but she, she encouraged me and said, hey, you know, there's something there. And now, the, 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 re, the, the title, Recapture Me, came out of a, a, a worship experience? Yeah, I mean, that whole song came out of just a spontaneous moment. Um, and that's, that happens with songs. I mean, some of the best songs, I think, on our album it, right now are... There's a couple songs that, that were written in 15 minutes. They just boom poured out and they and they came. And there are other songs that you know that you've held on to for a year or two. Um, I typically write all 98 percent of the lyrics. Okay, um, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, what is the uh, process? Uh, I write a bunch of music. I'm not a great musician. I mean, I play guitar enough to be dangerous, um, but I hear. I, ha I have an ear for it. I think and. Um, so I write a lot of the, I mean, I write most of the melodies, lyrics, bring it to real musicians, you know, LJ, Jason, and Joel, and they turn my uh, attempt at musical genius, and I think they do a pretty good job forming that. And then my melodies might adjust according to what they've got going on. Right. Um, and sometimes you Frankenstein things. Sometimes it's like, man, you know what? That bridge was awesome that we wrote. The rest of that song was terrible. But I really like what we're doing over here. Maybe if we just... So everybody, you know. it's, it's a collaborative effort, but a lot of the lyrics uh, just come from you and, and, and uh, songwriting. Unless they're bad lyrics, and then the guys are like, that's a terrible lyric, you need to change that, and how about you use this? You, know? I, 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 you mentioned earlier that music is your passion, uh, uh, Christ is your passion, yeah. but also music, and mine also, uh, I love music. Uh, and, and great songwriting has yeah. always fascinated me. Uh, and I know we're, we're, we're running sh uh, towards the end of the show here, yeah. but uh, no rhyme or reason to inspiration for lyrics. It may come from sitting down with your Bible. It may yeah. come from a daily experience. It may come from worship. Just, it, you, you, it just Sometimes, I mean, it happens. And when it happens, modern technology is a beautiful thing that you can capture it very easily now. Um, I, you know, a lot of our stuff is biblically, you know, Recapture me. Some of the verses are are, are direct um, things from Psalms, where you know David says a lot. Listen to my plea. Um, so yeah, there's definitely you know biblical things in some of the songs. Some of the songs are just song. Nothing else on the record is a song about just being busy and not having time to focus on anything. Right. And and so right. You know some of the songs are. Uh, you know, not more Christian than others, but I mean it's all it's all from the perspective of someone who loves Jesus. So what is a Christian song? I this mean? is, I, I just, the, this time has flown by and we are running short. Give me, I'm going to say 30 seconds or so. What would somebody, there are a lot of people that are going to watch this on Paducah 2. A lot of people watch Paducah 2 and they see yep. the reflection. They come to a Hearts of Saints show. What would they see and hear? Musically, I mean, I mean is it, uh, is it uh, like Recapture Me? Well, is no, I mean... Peter, Paul, and Mary <laughs> Reborn? No, man, it's... We're a rock band. I mean, we are a, you know, a electronic hence, pop rock band. I hence mean, it's, the Mick Jagger movie. Hence the you, Jagger. I mean, we, we love bands that, that not only write great songs and great melodies and stuff you can sing along with and sticks in your head, but um, bands that put on a show. And, and, and so we... You know, you're going to see us all in the ties. I mean, there's depth. We feel like we're a live band. Um, and so that's where we got our start. I mean, we love performing. We love that aspect. So you're going to see a lot of energy. You're going to see a very mixed crowd. With a message. Yeah. With I mean, every song somebody uh, can, you know, I most mean, of the time. <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, I, somebody, was, my lady who cuts my hair yesterday said, what somebody I love about, somebody cut my hair, that's right. Uh, she said, what I love about you guys, 
Um, and I've never talked to her about like the band or anything. So and she's like, what I love about the band, I went to the website and he goes, what I love about it is that it's very obvious what you guys are about and you're not throwing it down anybody's throats. And that's, I think that's very important. We're trying I, to live life, man. Just live life and, and we shouldn't have to, you know, there's a great saying I always go back to, but preach the gospel to the entire world and if necessary, use words. That's um, great. And we're, we're just trying to live life trying to be a great band, and we love Jesus, and so that's going to just drip from everything we do. And that's so important. We've been talking to Craig Felker from the West Kentucky band Hearts of Saints. We hope we'll have some graphics up at the end where your yeah. music uh, can be uh, uh, purchased. Yeah, uh, and it's in stores uh, now. Appreciate you coming in and uh, telling us about a rock band as a manner of mission. Thank you, mm. Craig. Thank you, buddy.